Hello everyone, it's me, Juan Game 4 by another video, and today, yeah, uh, sorry if I'm going to be sounding a little bit different and not, you know, going over the top, my nose is still being stuffed, but I figured I got to at least give you guys one video before I take it easy. I feel a little bit better, but anyways, uh, we're going to be doing a reaction video, a uh, video that came out, I think, Saturday, that I didn't get the chance to do so because I was ill. So it's Matt pa is Game Theory another Poppy video, Poppy Playtime. So let's do this. No more wasting time. Let's do this. Oh nah, Matt Pat looked like he's gone insane. Oh. You know, that would have scared me if I wasn't so ill. The show that's full of hot air. It's that time again, folks. <coughs> Games has come out of its hibernation and finally given us what we've all been clamoring for for over a year now. The long-awaited Chapter 3 second trailer. Wait, are, are you kidding me? Come on. Don't get me wrong. I love brightening images frame by frame as much as the next guy. Are we about to brighten something? Oh. Are we ever going to brighten something? But it's been, what, yes. 15 months since Chapter 2? I feel like I need to get my poppy fix to complete my indie horror Thanos glove of 2023. That's that. If this trailer is anything to go by, the newest chapter is going to be incredible. Immediately, things feel different here. And it's clear Incredibly dark. Hard on the horror. This very clearly reads of like, hey, this is so starkly different from anything else in this franchise right. very clearly reads as hey we sold a movie one of the developers was even asked about this in the official poppy playtime discord server and he said quote it'll still have the same feel as the first two in a lot of respects but the horror is definitely dialed up i knew Which, it of course got everyone real excited and from the creepy images of dead kids to the literal writing on the wall this trailer is like a toy box exploding with clues about what this new chapter is about and i think that i figured it all out months before its release Not all right only will we have Tortured kids and sinister poppy gas, but we're now being shown more about the monsters they became and the creepy religion they've created. A religion that oh, no. sacrifices rituals and the leader who's manipulating his congregation into serving him. So strap on your grab packs and hold your breath, loyal Tor theorists. Tortured children? The oh, no. Red fog of play care. The repeated theme for this chapter is the use of red gas. So let's start there. In a past theory, I suspected that this gas was made from poppies, a red flower that we know Playtime used in their experiments trying to bring dead rats back to life it's also in the name of the game so you know not that big of a logical leap yeah. i also pointed out that poppies have been used throughout history as a sleep agent mainly due to the natural opium that's contained in the plant and yep. that is exactly what we see in the trailer on the walls of the play care we find a drawing that shows clouds of red gas with the phrase time for bed written underneath this is the last thing that the child sees before falling asleep under the influence of the gas oh, which then leads no. us to the question who is our new monster responsible for delivering it we see some crude child drawings on the wall of a purple creature with red clouds around him and text all associated with either sleep or nightmares this then seems to be our gas monster sometimes the purple figure is shaped like a bird other times it's got super long limbs and sometimes it's just a purple scribble this has gotten many people on the internet to think that he's a shapeshifter i disagree I su yeah i don't think it's gonna be a shapeshifter because like we've been going at with this whole thing about you know toys like pop like huggy wuggy was a stuffed animal and like it's all toys, either robotic toys, either plushy toys. Having a shapeshifter that doesn't seem to be getting a game, I mean, having a shapeshifter in the game just feels so out of place. And I think I don't know. I feel like I did forget to do a video about the trailer. I did do do a reaction, but I don't think I ever posted it. But allegedly, I thought that the thing was. Some sort of creepy teddy bear. I feel like that would be more unbrand. I felt like it could be a teddy bear, but it's like, no, not really. The fact that this is just the result of sleepy kids not having a clear vision of what this thing actually is as they pass out. Fortunately for us, though, we get to see a bit more of this creature. By pausing the trailer on one of the final frames, brightening the image, and then color balancing it a bit, we see that it's got itself a purple paw with four sharp claws. That, coupled with the shape of the nose and eye sockets that we see so a bear, right? jump scare, as well as the presence of a muzzle right here, reads to me like an old cartoon cat. Almost like the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. Oh. Now, that at first might seem weird. This franchise 
franchise already has itself two other cats in the form of Cat B and Candy Cat. Yeah. So why are they triple dipping? Can't they come up with something new? I suspect that it's because a cat that lures kids to their final sleep is actually a common superstitious belief. One phrase that you sometimes hear tossed around is that cats will steal a baby's breath. For centuries, since after, when? The legends circulated about cats sneaking into cradles at night, causing children to suffocate and die. It's unclear where that whole urban legend started. Probably the story of just one parent where it happened to them, but it's thought that the smell of the milk on baby's breath, or the crib being a nice warm place to cuddle, or the cat being jealous, some combination of those things get them to climb into bed, lay across the baby, and deprive them of oxygen. There was even a coroner back in 1791 that came to a child and actually stated this urban legend was indeed the cause of death, which only gave more support to the superstition. And that, I suspect, is what our Chapter 3 cat monster is doing. After a fun day at the game station under the watchful eye of Mommy Longlegs, this guy would come in to quote-unquote help the children fall asleep, stealing the breath of children by replacing their air with his poppy sleeping gas. Considering that we've been seeing more and more images of gas- Look, I get it. Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 is supposed- is supposedly being the dark- the darkest chapter, and that- whether it's gonna be like the poppy gas or whatever, okay, fine. I mean, we did this theory before in the past. But seriously, a cat creature? I mean, I just think it should be a bear to be a... I, I think a bear should be fine, but... I don't know, I guess people are gonna say, Look, they're copying FNAF! I, I think that's it, but, you know, I just still think it's gonna be a bear. Masks, this is also something that we're likely going to have to use to protect ourselves. Otherwise, we might begin to hallucinate and have to distinguish between what's real and what isn't, just like the kids' drawings on the wall would suggest. So what is this gas cat? Or, I suppose if you're following the conventions of the naming system for this game, it would be Gassy Caddy. Not the most sinister of names. But what is Gassy Caddy up to now? Well, the writing is quite literally on the wall in this trailer. It's been busy carving phrases like, I live to serve our angel of salvation. I rejoice in him. Wrapped us in garlands on the wall. Garlands, by the way, are wreaths of flowers that are often used for Catholic baptism. So you might start to see where all this is going. Oh, are no. Stage lights? Oh, they're like candles to me. Are they, oh, yeah. I think like ritual candles. I got a lot of religious imagery here. Cassie Caddy is no longer taking on the role of a monster, but instead that of a religious leader. This idea is... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. No, now we're adding religious into this? This flock. This isn't referring to a group of birds. It's being used in the Christian sense. One of the many oh, roles no. that Jesus is associated with in Christianity is that of a shepherd. Shepherd, one who tends to, feeds, and cares for his flock. The sheep in this scenario are his followers, people that rely on and follow Jesus in their day-to-day -day lives. Meanwhile, the word somniferous stands out for a few reasons, mainly because I have never heard anyone ever use that word in a sentence before. Me neither. Out that in the years since this factory closed, Gassy's been studying up for his SATs. Always be learning there, Gassy Caddy, because let me tell you, I am right there with you. I, too, am a nerd for words. Somniferous would be, what, my sleepy? Yeah. Because somnia is sleep. Turns out I was actually half right in my assessment there. According to Google, it's not just being sleepy, but having sleep induced upon you. So our gassy caddy is talking about his flock of sleepy kids, the orphans in the play care that he's putting to sleep. Oh, but the play no. care has been abandoned for years. There aren't kids there anymore that can serve as his sleepy flock, right? Wrong. The whole point of the play care and the poppy gas was to help convert them into toys. But rather than them all being giant toys like Huggy Wuggy, I suspect a lot of these kids turned out much smaller. The team and I were playing through Project Playtime's newest update. Oh, yeah, because there were... What does this say? Take every... Every step. Take every step like it's yep. your last. <laughs> oh, and they're heading to play cat. Yeah, and it's a bunch of random characters, so these are kids, not, like, toys. A poster with three new plush toys walking towards the play care. Now, at the time, I just thought that these toys were there to represent the children walking to the play care, trying to make things seem wholesome and child-friendly. But now, I don't think that these were representations at all. I've already mentioned the sad <laughs> that, that, images of it's the, the truth. Of the play care. But did you notice the remains of characters next to their faces on the edges of the frame? What? These are the same characters. That don't oh. The There's also a new character there that wasn't on the poster, a green bunny. And if you look at a lady Later drawing from one of the children in the trailer, we see a plush with floppy green ears and the words, my new friend. This kid became his friendly green bunny. And I suspect that the other children all had similar fates, becoming the very mascots of play care. This is the sleepy flock that Gassy is talking about. A group oh, of no. children that are lost and scared and see him as their only savior. But then who is this angel of salvation?
No, nah, Poppy, well, play, play care needs to be stopped. Playtime Co. needs to be stopped joy. immediately. Sorry. Yeah. His absence was a flaw in the scientific process. It's the prototype, 1006, the one we believe was created from the man who wanted to bring joy to children, Elaine Lilligwin. He was the yeah. first successful toy from the Bigger Bodies initiative. He was the original that led to the creation of all the others. And we actually get our very first look at him in these trailers. This massive robotic amalgamation made from various other toy parts. He got things like a... Okay, so yeah, like... I guess since, um, I don't know, depending if I am going to release that video, but let's see. So, yeah, I do believe that Elliot Lugwit will come in and he will have like a, uh, he'll have a, like some sort of big body. Like he's, he's collecting the parts of the big body initiative robot, the big body monsters like Huggy Wuggy and Pop and even Mommy Mommy long legs, cause we know we saw him. We saw the prototype dragging mommy long legs away. So I'm definitely do believe that she's gonna be around here somewhere. Heck, I wouldn't be surprised if she was part of the arm. But you know, I think that's the bit because like I pretty sure it's gonna be revealed. There's gonna be lots and lots of more. You know the big toy initiative i feel like there's going to be a lot more bigger toys like more huggy wuggies heck we might even see recolors of them just like how we saw the mini recolors in chapter two so that's why i feel like it's gonna happen but that's just me huggy head near the top and there right there there's uh, mommy's top half oh i was right well kind of Bye bye. This is what the prototype's working on. This is what mommy meant by make me a part of him. And my suspicion is that this is what Gassy and his somniferous flock are helping to build. Any cult needs themselves a goal, something that helps the leader to become more powerful. And gathering parts of dead toys, maybe even killing other toys themselves in order to build a monstrous body. Yeah, that one seems to fit the bill. And if any of them die along the way, well, then they're just martyrs for the cause. In the opening shot of Huggy's headless body, there's actually a dog plushie similar to the dog that we've seen in the posters, also missing a head. If you die or fall victim in your mission you don't die in vain you get the privilege of becoming part of the savior but did you notice something missing in this 1006 amalgamation his spindly arm and long thin fingers that we see from the end of chapter two that critical missing piece in this silhouette makes me think that this isn't his body or at least i don't think it's his body yet notice how still this yet is. well that could certainly be there for dramatic effect i actually think it's because this body is a work in progress the oh cameras around the play care give off a ritualistic vibe and that combined with the missing iconic arm makes me think that maybe 1006 Gassy and his flock are gathering these materials to build him the perfect body and that they still need to put his soul into that body and so chapter 3 is going to be about a stop oh okay well I just don't hold on what he's made about chapter 3 stopping it stopping the somniferous flock from finishing the job so that maybe finally we can be a hero in this game maybe but I don't think so you see I'll be honest with you Matt Pat uh, as much as I feel like this should be the right opportunity, I don't think it is. Most likely, Chapter 3 is going to be focusing us escaping the play care, especially with the quote-unquote gassy, gassy caddy running about. And I feel like we're going to deal with Elliot Lugwid, the prototype, in his full kaiju-sized body at the end of the chapter. I just feel like it, it should be like that. Because we dealt with... With demonic bendy in chapter five of bendy and ink machine so i feel like it's a bit on brand on that point we deal with giant giga monster at the end of each chap each five chapter stories i feel like that's the whole memo so i feel like chapter five that's where we're going to deal with that giant behemoth Thus far, we've been nothing but the villain. It's been well established at this point that we used to work here. And not only did we work here, we were instrumental in the creation of some of these toys. You wonder who we are. But why? You should know. 
It was your doing that made us. Oh, we said that. Oh, so Matt was right. Oh shoot, Man Pads. He, he solved it. We've killed both Huggy Wuggy and yeah. Tommy Longlegs. Yeah. Toys that were made from kids. It's not a great track record for our player character, right? Currently there's a Poppy ARG taking Look, man, it's not our fault. I mean So what? We should just offer ourselves like, yep, send me to the gulag. Send me to the gulag. It's not our fault. Well, in character Maybe the in character we're playing as, yeah, he might be at the fault, but I don't want to perish because of his mistakes or their mistakes. Based on the lead up to chapter three, and while there isn't enough information yet to fully solve it, there are aspects that have been discovered that shine a light on the children involved in the play care scheme. One of the discoveries was this incident report about one of the orphans in play care, Marie Payne. Now, if the name Marie Payne sounds familiar, well, it's because we found a transfer request in Chapter 2 about her. In that request, we were told that she was the child that would go on to become Mommy Longlegs. Now, why do I bring that up? Well, if you yeah. remember, Mommy was fine with the orphans because she never wanted them to feel alone like she did. She was protective of the kids. Yeah. Now, the only people that Mommy Longlegs lashed out at were the staff, the people who tortured her and transformed her into a giant neon pink toy. She knew what they were going to be doing to these kids because it had all been done to her first. She was trying to be a protector, a comfort. We also know that she doesn't trust the prototype or any of his religious rhetoric. Oh, This is especially important if the prototype is indeed Elliot Ludwig, founder of Playtime, the man who started the whole toy conversion process in the first place. She doesn't buy his lip. Oh, nah, please don't tell me that Elliot Ludwig was actually evil this whole time. A toy shtick one bit. She knows that he's once again trying to use the people around him for his own selfish games. In fact, a group of toys building a big body using the parts of other living creatures, it's the bigger bodies initiative all over again, but this time for the prototype. All of these clues together make me curious about what our motivations are for being here. Are we actually here to help, or are we just cleaning up the mess of evidence that we left behind? Are we on the side of the orphans, unwillingly turned into monsters, or are we going to end up siding with Elliot all over again, a man who created a nightmare for so many. Early signs aren't exactly promising. We stripped mommy of her freedom and independence only to feed her Look, man, I refuse so to help Aya Lugwood, man. With these kids from play care. It seems like there's no route where we don't walk away with some blood on our hands. Though, some tells me that's something our player character is more than familiar with. But hey, that's... Oh, that's just creepy. But... Come on now. I don't think there's gonna, this game is actually gonna make... It's gonna end with us basically helping... The prototype. I mean, I, I still don't think Elliot Ludwig is evil in some way. I mean, if he is evil, then... Great. So what's the point of turning your daughter into Poppy? Like, you, like I'm pretty sure your daughter perished. And I'm pretty sure you started, this, you started using Poppy flour to make... To, you know, to preserve her body. And I always thought that it was the scientists that did this. So I feel like the only way I feel like this could work is that maybe Thomas Elliot is being corrupted. Like, he's slowly being corrupted. I'm not sure how in any way, but I feel like he would be corrupted. But I wouldn't be surprised if we're actually playing an antagonist protagonist. Because I don't think we ever, I don't think in chapter, I don't think the five chapter storylines, I don't think we ever play as an antagonist protagonist. A bad guy who is our protagonist. Kind of like how L in, I mean, not L, Light from Death Note. I'm sorry. Because like, Henry Stein was a good guy, through and through. But I don't think we ever dealt, we ever play as the villain in a five chapter storyline as our protagonist. So I'm not saying that I want Thomas Elliot to essentially be evil, but if we're here to just destroy everything, then so be it, I suppose. Anyways, guys, that's going to be the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I like the video so I know you guys enjoy and comment down below what you guys think. And, you know, leave some suggestions down in the comments below. I am always taking requests and subscribe.
hopefully I'm better when the next video drops. This is OneGamer54, signing off.